Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. This is episode number 32. Uh, I'm Roman Mejia, I bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course, author interviews. Uh, this week, uh, we want to begin our show course with uh, thanking our great Patreon supporters. We have two new supporters. We have Kieran Uchi and Sebastian Nielsen, both of whom have pledged $6 a month to support the podcast. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, they get all our content a little bit earlier than anyone else, but they also get a bunch of other nice, cool, geeky rewards for the level of which you're supporting us, which is the uh, Geek King level. So thanks, guys. You are Geek Kings in my heart. Uh, thank you both for being great supporters. Uh, and of course, anyone else who wants to support the podcast on Patreon can go to patreon.com forward slash Geekbytes Podcast. Now, uh, in new releases and reviews, we'll be talking about three great, amazing stories. Actually, uh, four great, amazing stories. Uh, we're going to be with the beginning, Dark Paladin, book one. And then we're going to also be reading Legends of Tartharius, book two of Kylea's story. And then also questing a lit RPG novella. And of course, we're going to be finishing up with Benvari Mountains, book two in the Amurilia series. So those are the novels that I'll be reviewing this week. There were a couple other ones that came out on Amazon that I just couldn't quite get the time to read through uh, before the recording of the podcast here. But I'll be definitely reading them this weekend and reviewing them next weekend. Uh, We are going to move on to, of course, lit RPG news. And in Lit RPG News, we're going to begin with our first story, Scotty Fuchs, author of the Origin ARS series, and some other ones, um, has said he's planning some new releases for this month and next month in his Lit RPG stories. This month, he plans on releasing Galacticon Fist of Legend, Volume 2. Additionally, he has uh, a going to be releasing next month uh earth tactics advanced volume one but before that he does plan to release a uh, an unnamed project uh that that is going to be using turn-based gaming mechanics um he's a little frustrated with it apparently because it's it's a complicated way to tell a game story uh but i'm hoping that it's super interesting because of that so um good luck to you scotty and look forward to reading your new stories uh, also in Little PG News this week, we have Dakota Kraut. He has gotten the artwork for his second book, Dungeon Madness, uh, and it looks a little creepy. Um, I think it has something to do with the weird growing things on the hand in the picture, uh, but it's cool. It reflects the madness part in Dungeon Madness, definitely. Uh, but I'm looking forward to reading it next week when it comes out. Uh, on, and the author, Dakota Kraut, has assured me that the novel is totally done. Um, he was just waiting on the artwork to come in to, to actually publish it, but it'll be out on uh, schedule next week. So there you go. Also, in, in new artwork that's come out, Lion's Quest Dual Wield. Uh, that's the second book from Michael Scott Earl. There's art cover artwork for that out. So it looks very pretty and interesting and buff. The guy likes buff. The cover guy. Um, the, the author has said that he that Book is up for pre-order now. Um, it'll be out on March 27th for $7.49. Um, that's the pre-order release date. But the author has stated that uh, that's just a, a date he put out there just to make sure he didn't miss anything on Amazon. He actually plans to release it either at the end of February or the very beginning of March. So look forward to that one when it comes out as well. Uh, now, again, there are also two new, uh, new releases on Amazon this week that I didn't get a chance to read. Just a busy week. We have Potty Mouth by Robert Bevan. This is a really short story. Um, I believe it's like 25, 26 pages on on Amazon. Um, And it's a short story in Robert Bevan's Caverns and Creature Story uh, series world. Um, So uh, that's the Critical Failure series of stories. That's the same author. He does also releases a series of short stories uh, from from there. Um, It's really interesting um, looking, I haven't read it yet, of course, but I like the other short stories he has, and they're they're relatively inexpensive, and they're nice little pops of interesting story. So I enjoy, look forward to reading that one. Additionally, Eden's Gate, The Reborn, a lit RPG adventure, is also out now. It has some really nice reviews on Amazon. Um, but again, I haven't had a chance to read it yet, so it's something that I'll be doing this weekend and, and reviewing next week. Okay, on to upcoming lit RPG. Um, on February 15, 2017, we have Dungeon Madness, book two of the Dungeon Divine Dungeon series. Uh, Reading Gate Online is coming out February the 17th. That's going to be uh, book two entitled Crimson Alliance. We also have For the Guild, 
um, which is the third book in the Morelia series. I know. Book two just came out. Book three is coming out later it, on February the 21st of uh, this month. So, yeah, that's a lot fast writing. Uh, Spitznots, a permadeath lit RPG lit FPS series. will be out February the 28th. Galactic Fist of Legend Volume 2 sometime in February. The Crystal Sphere is going to be out on March the 10th. We also have Lion's Quest Dual Wield. At March 27th is the pre-order date, so that's what I'm going to work with. Uh, it'll should be out sooner. Uh, Awaken Online Precipice out March 31st. That's book two in the Awaken Online series. Delver's LLC Obligations Incurred tentatively out in March. Um, Earth Tactics Advance Volume 1. Um, again, out tentatively in March. And there you go. That's it for February and March. On to uh, new releases and reviews. Hey, everybody. This is uh, Ramon Mejia from Little RPG Podcast, interrupting the regular news stuff. Uh, I totally forgot to mention when I was recording the original broadcast um, about the interview I did as a question and answer interview with Gia Killa, translated by Nikita Sandler. Now, this is a written interview uh, that was sent by Facebook, email, and a bunch of other ways um, across the globe. For you folks at home, um, Gia Killa's uh, Realm of Warcraft series, book four, is coming out apparently within the next month on March the 17th. It'll be entitled Shadows of the Great Forest. Um, now, he answers some great questions about where his series came from, why he started writing lit RPG, his process as an author, of course, and all the questions, and I mean all the questions that the audience submitted. You guys at home asked him, he answered. Um, we also got some cool artwork from um, Russia for this series that has never been seen outside of Russian borders before. It's actually kind of cool um, CGI-looking stuff. Uh, check it out, of course, at our website at geekbindspodcast.com. Uh, we'll have the link in the show notes for the written interview we do with uh, Gia Kill, of course. Now, we also wanted to mention that uh, his friend and fellow Russian lit RPG author, Andrei Vasiev, I hope I'm saying that right, um, he has written I think, like 10 or 11 lit RPG novels in Russia, and his first one has been translated into English and is being published on Amazon on February the 14th, so not that long from now. It's the Feyrul series. It'll be entitled More Than a Game. So take a keep an eye out for that on Amazon on February the 14th. I know you might be busy, you know, kissing a loved one or two, um, but this seems like a new... Uh, new series from potentially a good Russian author, uh, More Than a Game, out on February the 14th again. So, back to your regularly scheduled Let RPG Podcast. And in new releases and reviews, folks, we'll begin with The Beginning, Dark Paladin, Book One. Uh, this is written by Vasily Mahenko. You might rem remember that author from the Way of the Shaman series, which is still being translated and, and produced here. It's actually, a finished series in Russia, and the author is just taking the time to, to translate it and publish it in the United States. But this is actually his new series that he just wrote in Russian uh, and has done pretty well. Um, it is 385 pages, $3.99. It is available on Kindle Unloaded. Now, full disclosure, Magic Dome Books, the folks that do the translating and publishing uh, for those books into English, uh, sent me an early copy of the novel. I've, of course, since picked up the story on Kindle Unlimited. Um, so I'm paying to read it just like you guys. Um, now, this is a, a rather interesting and sometimes confusing beginning of the story. It's a little confusing. It tries to explain a lot of stuff at once instead of focusing on the gaming lit RPG stuff. Um, however, personally, once I got past that beginning and just ignored the confusing relationship between the game world and the real world, um, it was interesting. It was a really interesting novel. Uh, again, this is by the same author with a shaman, but don't expect it to be that same story or even that same kind of theme. Uh, this is a, a much darker story. There's a lot more intrigue and betrayal and player versus player action in this particular series. It has definitely has a Hunger Games vibe uh, with newly initiated players teaming up and then being trained each other to survive the academy that the player is sent to. Um, now, this is the confusing premise of the novel. Our world, Earth, is really a staging ground for a fantasy game. We're all NPCs. Um, and one day, one of us, a, a soldier, kills a player in the game. 
Um, and even though that NPC soldier dies, he's racked up life, having earned a place as a player in the game itself. Um, now, if that weren't confusing enough, the non-player character soldier turned player chooses the class of Paladin and has to survive a mandatory period of training at the Academy, uh, which he's supposed to be taught game mechanics, how the world works, uh, all these fundamental things. Now, unfortunately, the player he killed as a soldier is also a mentor at the Academy, and he sent his 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 students um, after our main character to end his life in the game. And because uh, the main our main character did not go through some weird initiation process, he if he dies in the game after losing all his levels, um, he dies forever. So that's that's kind of the the stakes for him. Now, one of the things I really liked about the game, uh, the novel, I should say, is, is learning about the game world. Um, to leave the academy, players must find 10 trainers scattered throughout the vast training area, and they must also, of course, survive all the challenges, monsters, e- other players, to, to get to them all. Now, each trainer is meant to teach the players a different aspect of the game, where there's combat class abilities, the user interface, special abilities, specializations within classes, whatever it is. Um, and that was kind of a new and interesting way for, for me to learn about um, the game world itself. I, I, I to me, that was one of the most interesting parts of the story. And a lot of the suspense, suspense in the story is, comes from the main character trying to find ways to reach these trainers, even though they're often guarded by other players trying to kill him and the other Paltons. Um, now, another aspect of the story that I really enjoyed are just the class specializations and jobs. Now, now uh, the game mechanics works out this way that the each player gets to choose a, an upfront class like Paladin, Mage, Hunter. Um, those are the, like the broader categories. But then underneath that, they can also specialize in, in what they choose to do, um, whether it's uh, being an explorer or um, something else. There are a lot of options explained or being um, like a bounty hunter. Uh, specializations and then in addition to that they can also choose jobs like a judge or a carpenter or a a creator of some kind um so just combining those aspects uh, of the game really allows for a lot of interesting uh combinations reminding me of the job class system from final fantasy um which is uh something that i really liked in that particular video game franchise and i liked learning about this game mechanic so it's kind of cool to read about all those different possibilities and permutations possible in this particular game world now again uh the story is very much darker than where the shaman there's a lot of action there's a pen to betrayal so don't trust anybody in the story when you read it and there are a few unbelievable plot twists in the story as well but overall it, it's an interesting story if you think of it as a player trying to get through a training scenario of an mmo with player versus player enabled if you think of it that way it makes a lot more sense and it's enjoyable it's a good book i enjoyed it i give it a seven out of ten so there you go on to our next book, uh, Legends of Tartherius, book two of Kylia's story. Uh, now, this is actually also um, being released as a collection between book one and book two. These are shorter stories, so put them together kind of makes sense for the author. Uh, this is 165 pages. It is 99 cents, available on Kindle Unlimited. Now, it's, it's really well-priced for the page count, in my opinion. The beginning is a little bit awkward because it tries to transition from the end of book one into book two, and then it jumps to the get. Now, in book one, um, it is a story of a dystopian kind of future in England where the government has been taken over by a private game company, and they've actually revoked everyone's citizenship. Uh, and people must pay back the national debt or their portion of it to regain their citizenship by a certain period of time. And if they don't, then they're just kicked out of the country. Um, and for our main character, Ky- um, Kylia, yeah, Kylia, sh- her deadline is coming to a close. Not only does she have to pay back her own personal debt, but she also pays back her family's debt, all of whom are dead. So she has a mom, a father, and a brother who have died. And she's, for some reason, taken on their debt to pay back as well. Uh, yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird premise, but that's what we're working with. Uh, now to do this, people log into the game, uh, the the fancy MMO, which is a fantasy world, and they earn money there, and that money can go towards their debt as well. So that's kind of the premise of the world. And in the first book, we got an introduction to that world and some of the play styles for for the game character Kylia. Um, now in this particular short second edition of a second book in the series, which is also so short, um, I'm kind of breaking up the short story into two particular portions of it. One is the real world, the consequences of Kylie's arrest, um, Kylie's arrest rather, 
uh, and released on charges of cheating in the game and the public opinion and, and almost chaos that results from this because she was getting really close to paying off her debt and then she was arrested and that money was taken away. So the public learned about this and they're kind of rebelling a little bit against the system as a whole. Um, and that's, that's part of the real world story. Now the, uh, the second portion of this is the game world story. Um, and in the first book, it was really just kind of an introduction to the world explanation. And this one, it feels like the character just goes on a series of random unrelated quest to gain experience in gold. And it was, it, 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 I'll talk about the second, but it feels less satisfying than it did in the first book. Now the real world stuff is very dystopian. It gets a little political sometimes. Um, it, and it's fine. It's a really well written portion of it, but it's not super interesting to me. The game stuff, um, just feels unrelated to not even the other quest, but also to the real world stuff. It kind of just felt like it was inserted in there as a series of short stories, um, to make it lit RPG. Uh, like I felt like the, the real world stuff was at least consistent and coherent. Like that, even though it's broken up by, by sections of the character in the game world, um, the real world stuff could actually be separated as its own story and it's cohesive. The game world stuff, not as much. They're just a series of like smaller quests and sometimes they're really funny and interesting quests and sometimes they're not, but they just feel like separate little modules that are just put in there. And, and, and for me that, you know, um, didn't seem real fulfilling. Um, and so for, I guess it's well-written. I like the game characters. I like the, 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 the characters in the story, uh, the story between Kylie and Gerald is the romance. There is super adorable. It's interesting. I still like it. Um, it's just that the disconnect between the world world and the game world is just feels like two different stories that were kind of smushed together and only one of which I was actually interested in. Um, so while I like the first novel in the series and I look, I don't I'll, I'll probably read the third one still when it comes out. This second one just didn't really do much for me, so I'm, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. Okay, uh, next, Questing, a lit RPG novella written by Kiran Uchi. Um, now, uh, this is 118 pages, $2.99, also on Kindle Limited. I actually think that page count is a little bit smaller than what it actually is, but that's what Amazon says, so that's what I'm going to work with. So it's a little higher price than um, the last story. Um, it comes out to about almost three cents per page, which is a little bit more than I usually want to pay. But again, if you have Kindle Unlimited, go check it out. It's, you know, not going to cost you anything extra. Uh, this is the story of Anon and his first couple quests in the most advanced full immersion VR game possible. Uh, it, it, the entirety of the story almost is in the game world. So there's very little real world stuff or storyline, which is fine by me. I, I prefer it that way. Um, uh, it's a very interesting story. It is the, it's more traditional fantasy. Uh, the beginning of the story um, is just, it's just an introduction part where the main character goes on a few intro quests and that's all it really is. The almost the entire story is just him questing, going from quest to quest to quest. Um, and the storyline just is interesting. It's it, it's it's I, I liked it a lot more than I thought it was gonna be, than I thought it was. Just based on the page count, like it feels like a bigger story than 118 pages to be honest with you. Uh, and the, and while the, the 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 second half of the book is a little more traditional fantasy, like there are fewer gaming mechanics described there. Um, it was still. Interesting. Uh, main character goes through starting towns, training the big city on a variety of quests, dealing with smelly trolls, cute vampires, ghosts. Um, and it was a good time reading it. And while I had some issues with the game mechanics, like they didn't quite make sense. I'm like, why would a, a level one character uh, hit consistently for 55 to 80 points of damage? And he becomes a little OP, a little overpowered very quickly in the story. Um, despite those little naggling little things, uh, it was good. I really enjoyed it. I give it a seven out of 10, but I definitely recommend it more for people who are half Kindle limited just because of the price point, um, purchasing it separately. So there you go, but it was a good story. I enjoyed it. Okay. On to the last review. It's going to be Ben Vetti mountains book two in the Amrilia series by Michael Chatfield. Now, um, this is 366 pages, $4 and 99 cents. It is available on Kindle unlimited. Um, now, just a quick heads up, the last 10% of this novel is actually uh, a glossary of characters, names, and boy, are you going to need it. 
one of the few complaints I kind of have about the story, and it's really small, is that there are just so many characters to keep track of. Um, oftentimes when I was reading the story, I and the a character's name would come in, they start talking, and I'd be like, who is that again? I I don't remember who that is, and I had to go look them up, or it would take me a little while to remember who they are. Um, and then that, that, that was something that also happened in the last book, and I assume it's going to be a, a model for this series, when that you have such a large cast of characters and such a big world, um, that's going to kind of happen. So, But hey, problem solved. There's the glossary uh, that tells you, reminds you who these people are at the end of the book. Uh, now, in book one of the series, it focuses on the main character establishing a home for himself, Dave, and in the game world and expands into a community of elves, dwarves, and eventually players. There's a big reveal that, you know, our world is is actually the simulation and that this game world is actually a reality where, uh, created by an alien civilization um, who would plan to use humanity as like soldiers to kill alien races like orcs or whatever. Um, that's honestly less important. Then it's just a good fantasy action adventure story. And the big event in the first book, of course, is the big raid on the Dark Citadel. Uh, now in book two, Journey to Benveri Mountains, it's a much smaller group going off on a journey to the Benveri Mountains, uh, where Dave is going to learn how to be a master dwarf and smith. They have some adventures along the way, uh, which I won't spoil for you guys, during the first half of the book. And in the last half of the book, uh, it, it really is mostly crafting. Dave's story, the other characters um, learning new abilities, skills, powering up, leveling, that kind of stuff. Um, and that's that's it. It's not complicated. It's journey, first half, crafting and leveling and skill building, second half. And it was fun. It doesn't claim to be a, a super epic adventure yet. Um, this is really a setup for the third book, in which is going to be like an invasion where we're larger, more complex, and scary monsters are being released slowly, and the adventurers have to deal with them in this world. I mean, I enjoyed this book immensely. It was really, a, if you like crafting, this is definitely something you're going to want to read and be interested in. Um, again, less action, but more crafting. So there are balancing. Um, it, it was fun. I, uh, one of the things that I found interesting about the author is his writing pace. He just released book one a couple of weeks ago. He has this one coming out now and book three coming out in another couple of weeks at the end of February. And then um, from the messages I got from him, he plans to release a new book every single month at about the same same page count of about um at least a hundred thousand words or 366 pages at minimum um so that is a an amazing writing pace so i i, I envy michael chatfield uh that at least but this is a good book definitely give it a, a eight out of ten enjoyable for me at least and that's it we're done that's it for the podcast folks thank you very much for listening for watching and for taking the time to to listen and to talk to me you hear me talk about Litter PG and it, the books that I enjoy. Again, if you want to support the podcast, uh, you can find out all the ways to do so at litrpgpodcast.com forward slash support. Um, and again, until we can hang out again and chat about Litter RPG, folks, remember, go read some Litter RPG. Bye.